G'day folks, in this video I'll show how you can solve the Limcube Master Mixup version 1. Well, I'll be doing the whole series of the Master Mixups, one video for each of the seven puzzles. And I'll probably spend a little bit longer in this one going over piece names and things like that. Now up front, I'm going to say that this version is by far the worst turning puzzle of the whole series. So please don't judge the series by this one. The others turn much better and in many cases perfectly. So the main issue is with the 2x2 two two turns, they're no problem, as smooth as silk. As soon as you start trying to do this, you get what you've just seen a little bit there, some sort of lock up if you're not careful, a lot of catching. And there's been quite a bit written about this and I think it potentially releasing version 1 as version 1 may have put a few people off. Please don't let that be you. This is a great series of puzzles and this one is not even the most interesting one by any stretch but it's really important because it does have the basics and the basis of all the other puzzles. So there will be some catching pretty much all the way through and if I'm not careful there'll be some locking up as well. So if you're watching this to see if it's worth buying them, please don't let this one make your decision. Well, on these puzzles, I told you I'd talk about piece names. There are corners, obviously. There are outer edges, the red blue, red blue piece there is an outer edge. Then we have inner edges. So you can see if I move these inner edges like that, those two pieces there are inner edges. And you can see that they're actually different. There's a large one and a small one. And we have what I'm calling wings, which are the little pieces here next to the centers. And they, of course, go across there as well. And we have center pieces. So that's the piece types on all of the puzzles. The variation is in what type of pieces we have for each of them. So on this one, very clearly, everything's unbandaged. And so we just have basically one by one blocks for everything. Well, on some of them, you will have those two orange-green outer edges there will be a single 2 by one block. On some of them, the centers are a single 2 by 2 block. On others, the centers are two 2 by one blocks, like that. So there's a whole bunch of variations, and in fact, you can make your own if you've got the wherewithal to do that. Well, these puzzles generally either reduce to a 4x4 four four cube or to a mix-up ultimate cube, which is also known as the super mix-up, and in fact, the master mix-up version 0. So I said there were seven puzzles. Limcube released version zero after the other seven. I guess that makes eight in total. Yes, I'm a genius. Now, I did make a couple of videos a few years back for the version one and four, which I had then, and they were in black plastic. I'm not remotely happy with those videos, so I decided it was time to make new ones for the whole series, and I'm using these stickerless puzzles. What I'm loving about the stickerless versions is that I never have any issues with stickers. So as with all the videos on these puzzles, I'll take you through how to scramble each puzzle as well as step-by-step -step solving. There are orbits of pieces. So you might have seen before when I did that turn, those inner edges went into the center position. So the inner edges and the centers share the same orbit. And also you've got an outer edge here, which has gone into the orbit of a wing. And so those two piece types also share the same orbit. This is a 30 degree mix up cube. So it's not a 45 degree, so 30 degrees. And then you can start doing some turns as you'd like. Well, the solve for this puzzle is only going to use one recognized algorithm, and it's a super simple one. Everything else is really easy turns and logical thinking. Okay, let's get scrambling. With this one, the scramble is both the easiest and the longest in that sense. And what I mean by that is there's really nothing you have to do. You can do some 180 degree turns. You can do some 90 degree turns. There's no need to just stick with 180s as there is on some of the other puzzles. So you can just start doing this sort of stuff. But really to get things going, what you are looking to do is something like move a 30 degree layer and perhaps move that down and return. Now, is it essential to keep the structure? Absolutely not. And I've done scrambles where I don't keep the structure and maybe I'll do that today. My recommendation for why it might be a good idea is just that I think it turns better when you have your outer edges all in position. And that's been my experience from once the puzzle is back to that stage in the solve with the outer edges all in position, it does seem to turn better 
than previously. So again, you can see here, it's not quite perfectly aligned. That's why it's catching a little bit. So I've got to just try and make that go there. And that is often the most time consuming part of this solve. So probably for me, I don't know, I probably will keep the outer edges for a while, but that's what you've got to do is just keep doing a 30 degree turn here and there. And you can see it's starting to get more difficult to turn already move some slices and continue. I'll work through that for a little bit. Now here's another little example of a bit of a lock up. You can see that piece there, it looks like it's angled wrong. And this top slice here, when I look at it, I don't know if you can tell this, but that outer edge and that outer edge are just slightly sticking out from the lower layer. It's like there's an extra piece in there. There's not, what's happened is that piece has been twisted around a little bit as well. You can kind of see, if you look around, no other pieces really look like that. That one's sitting okay, but this one here is a problem. So what I would do is just grab it and just twist it that way. It's sometimes easier said than done. There it is. That pops down. And now when you look at those outer edges, they line up really well with the lower layer. So there's just a little example of a bit of a lock up. Well, pretty much everything that I want to get done there is done. You can see that all of this stuff is looking quite scrambled, but what has not been done yet, and deliberately, because I've tried to keep the structure, is the outer edges and the wings are still attached. So the next sort of little stage is just not keeping the structure. So doing a 90 degree, oh, sorry, a 30 degree turn, turning it 90, whatever. Just coming back to there. As long as you have wings and outer edges aligned, correctly so on the side of the centers you can just do this to your heart's content and you keep going until you don't see any more outer edges and wings together so there's an orange and an orange so I just want to put them one side of the center so each on the side of the center here and I can turn that off and I can do whatever else I want here perhaps turn it around go look for another one and before you know it, well, not before you know it, I mean, this has taken at least 15 minutes to do this. It'd take a little bit less if it wasn't uh, it's so important to keep things really well aligned. Uh, you'll be at this point where it does look like a complete and utter mess, and you can just do whatever 90 degree turns, including slices or not slices you like, but I suspect at this stage you'll be ready to start sewing. As am I, even if there's a couple of bits, well, they're actually not together, but even if you see a couple of bits here and there that are together, it's okay because it's not going to make any difference in the grand scheme of things. So the first stage to the solve is, as I mentioned, the outer edges kind of form the structure. And so that's what we want to do first is get the structure back and put all the outer edges into the outer edge position. Now, I must stress, I'm not trying to make pairs of outer edges, as in a red, white, red, white. I don't care about that. All I care is about getting two outer edges in the outer edge position and no outer edges in the wings position. So this, which is a big edge, is exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to just start and say that's done. And I'm now going to arbitrarily say that is the top face and I'm going to store that one on the top face. I'm going to go ahead and try and make another one. And I use the middle layer for it. And essentially what we're looking for is a piece on the top layer which is by itself. So that piece there is by itself because there's a wing, there's another wing. So in other words, if I put it there, there's nothing else competing. I want another piece like that on the bottom layer. So there's one there. So I could move that across and you could see that one would have worked as well. And I've now got another one. So the first few are particularly easy because there's a lot of movement and area to move that you've got. So I'll just start making them. And sometimes here I should say, it's a little bit tricky to tell if you've got a bit of a catch or a lock or if it's just hard to turn. So you just keep going until you can't turn it. That'll tell you you've got a bit of a lock up. Well, here's another one and we'll put that third one on the top face as well. So there's one, there's the second. So I'll turn that up. And this is where you've got to get things aligned properly to be able to turn the face. Bring another one down. Okay. This will do for a fourth. Happens to be a matched pair, but as I said, it makes no difference and it's not relevant. So we'll put that up. 
to there and replace it with that one. So there's four that we've done. We've got 12 to do, obviously. But again, I stress that it's not just enough to have two here. You've got to have none here and none here. So let's turn that over, call that the bottom face now, and I'll start placing them on the top. Okay, we can turn these two together. Put that up to the top. There's one on its own. Is there anything else super obvious on its own? Not really, although that one there. Yeah, this you can see one here and one here that are kind of on the same line. So if I do a 180 and bring them together, I've now got those two where I want them. So that creates another one. So I'll replace something up here that hasn't been done. Now I did say that I'd store them all on the bottom face and I do have them back there. But sometimes, you know, these ones come up to here and that's fine as long as you know where you're at. There's a pair here. It does have bits around it. Now that's not insurmountable at all. We'll be dealing with that soon. But for as long as I can, I'm going to try and get bits that are on their own. So here's a bit that would be on its own if that wasn't there. So I might try turning it and see if that makes a difference. It doesn't in this case. However, I do have a spare bit over here that I can turn around. In fact, that's even better. I'll just look elsewhere on the cube. There's another one. So let's put that one up to and replace it with this position, I reckon. Uh, let's take stock one, two, three. I think I have six done. Four, five, six. Okay, I've actually got seven better than I thought. I'll just put that other one on the bottom face. So there's four on the bottom now and three on the top. That's good because I'm just trying to get the fourth one on the top before I start the real work of getting the four middle layer ones done. So again, hopefully you can, you can find some that are on their own or create some. And what I mean by that is if I turn this and this are together, if I turn this one out of the way, let's try turning it that way, 180, this is now on its own. Now it's possible, if I turn that into, oh, here's a good one, potentially. Uh, if I turn that into the middle, I'm then looking for another middle one which may be on its own. Or another one like, in fact, that could have been that middle one. I'm not sure anymore. Oh, no, it was that one. Yeah, do you know what? It's time to start talking techniques because around about this point, you'll either get the fourth one up the top and then have to do the four middle ones, or you'll get to about now. And you'll go, well, nothing really seems to be working easily. Okay, so there's a number of techniques now to deal with this mess to get them where we want them. The first thing we can do is we can look at if we have two together in a wing position. What can we do with that? Well, that's very simple to get these two to that position. And just remember that green yellow is there and it's not relevant. It'll land somewhere else when we're done. But I'm going to move these two to there. And what we do is just turn one of them across to here. So it doesn't matter the top or the bottom. So I'm just going to turn that across and then I'm going to flip this entire big edge. And the way that I flip it is take it up to the top like so. And then here it is. And now I bring it down like that. And everything takes a little bit longer to do at this point. Okay, that has been flipped. When I turn, you remember that I turned the top layer this way. So when I turn that back, there was the green yellow that wasn't relevant. These are the two that are now in that edge position. So this is not super helpful yet. 
However, that is a technique that you will need to get two from a wing to an outer edge. The next thing that I may try and do, uh, let's have a look here. I've got one here on a, a slot of its own. I'd like to create another one on a slot of its own somehow. So one thing that I can do is these two are together. I'd like to get this one off. Now, what I can do initially is just turn it like that, and I'm going to end up flipping this big edge. What I don't want to do is cause something to come back to this position that will come back to here. So before I turn that off, I'll just have a look and see what's over in that position, because when I flip it, that position will come down to here. So I want nothing to be there. Can I make that happen? Yes, I can. There's now nothing in that position. So I will now turn this one off like that. I'm going to flip this entire big edge, which will put these two over here. And then return the layer that I moved, which was the lower layer. And you can see now that that is on its own. So is this. That's perfect. What I can do with these two is put them on the same line. Or in fact, I don't even need to do that yet, do I? For now, I've got enough space that I can just turn across like that. And there's the fourth upper pair that I was looking for. So I will now put that into this position. All right, so this is the point where you don't have any other options but to do things only in the middle layer because you've got eight pairs top and bottom. You've got no spaces top and bottom to work with anymore. So we now want to just continue using those techniques. So let's have a look at another technique that I could use here. I've got a heap together. What I would first do is say, let's turn that off and just see if I can match any just with turns like that. I can. There's at least two that I have matched like that. Okay. Now, this is another great example. And I've got a spare block over here. What I am going to do is bring the spare block over here next to this one. So this is what you can do when you have a pair in the outer edge position and a pair in the wing position, and you want to get this one off. And what it's going to do is leave this one here and put this one over to there. So you'll actually create two correct edges. So what we do, ideally, a spare slot over here, we just push these two that are in the wing position across to this big edge into that wing position. And we then flip this whole big edge. which takes longer than it should. Okay, once we've flipped, you remember that we turned this across this way with both layers, so we'll turn it back. And there's the one that's in that position, and there's the one that was here, which is now in that middle position. So there's two of the four edges created. That normally happens pretty much every solve. Uh, of course, when you're thinking about flipping big edges, what you're realizing is whatever is in the middle goes to the other position in the middle. And whatever is over, say, here in the top left will become bottom right. That's how it works and how you can think through what you're trying to do. So here are the one, two, three. There's another four pieces here. Now, these look potentially like they may actually match up together. So what I would do is turn them off like that. Now, I can't just put them together because it'll break the other bits. But I just want to see. I think they, they might. However, because I don't want to break those other bits, come on, 
Now this is the point where you've got to think, hang on, what's top and bottom and what was where? Because I've forgotten spending so much time trying to get that back. Okay, I think we're where we were. I'm going to pretend that I can't do anything with them. I'm going to look at a technique now for what do you do when you've got these single outer edges sort of everywhere. Because this is very common. Okay, the first thing I'm going to just focus on this one and this one. So I'm looking to get two outer edges in the same position on corresponding big edges. So you need to ignore this piece here for now. Just forget it exists. What I'm going to do is grab the orange white and push it across to here and push out this orange green. And then I'm going to flip this big edge. So I just move that top layer like that. I'm going to flip the big edge. And just remember where that piece is now going to go down to the bottom here. Got there in the end. Okay, and then I'll move the top layer back. And of course, when I move it back, these things come back. But you'll notice now those two pieces are in a wing position and paired. Well, I mentioned before what we do to get those into an edge position is we just turn one of them across to the edge and then flip that big edge. Okay, and then we'll return that. Now at this point, the, this one was done, this one was done. I've now got this third one done and I've got two pieces here. So the first thing that I want to do is kind of bring them together a little bit. So to bring this one closer to this one, I'm going to flip this whole big edge, which will keep these two in the middle. It'll bring this one down to that position. Did I say it was starting to turn better? It feels like it is a little bit better. Okay, this one's now here. Now, in order to do the thing that I just did, I want to have one here and one here, or one here and one here. So this is the one that I'm going to work with to get this piece into that position because this is the free slot. I don't want to disrupt that if I can help it. So how do I get this piece to here? If I just flip the edge, it just goes to there. No good. If I flip that edge, it goes back to here. So that's not going to help. So the question is, how is it going to get to that position? Well, it's going to come from here. And the way I can get it to here is to first have it in that upper position, in the middle edge position. So how do I do that? Well, it's going to have to come from there. So what I'm doing is essentially reverse engineering my direction as to what I need to do where. So the first thing I'm going to do is move this into the middle because I need to get it into the middle so I can flip it. So I'll turn that into the middle and flip the whole big edge, which will put this down to there. move it back. Okay. Now you might think, why was that useful? Well, remember I said that I needed it over here. In order to get it to there, it has to be here first in the upper position. So how can I get it to the upper position? Well, now it's in the lower position. I just flip this big edge without turning anything. There we go. And now finally, if I move this across and then flip the big edge, it will land down here, which is exactly where I want it. Just being fairly ginger here, I don't really want a lock up at this stage. This is where I'm just wondering where on earth does that piece go? Because I've got one more turn and this always happens. I think that's right. It looks good. Okay. Ah, oh, let's turn this upper layer. Do I turn the upper layer back? 
actually can't tell. Okay, one, two, I should have had three. So what I would do is just have I got that out one. I think that's happened by that little piece that was in there and I wasn't exactly sure where that should be. So if this does happen, it is not the end of the world at all. You would just sort of look at things and go, okay, I've got to redo something here. I would, what's the easiest thing? Oh, see, the problem is here again now. We've lost one of these up the top. So what I would do is put this up the top, get this one down. Perhaps that's part of the issue. And something like that is definitely not unusual for a solve. I've also somehow lost one on the bottom. So let's see if we can take care of that. It's a little bit frustrating, but it's just par for the course, unfortunately. There's a clear one there, so let's put that up to the top. Even now, I'm just struggling to keep these pieces where they should go. Let's just check. Okay, the top looks good. The bottom looks good. So we're kind of back to the middle. How are we going? We're back to only one. Well, that's kind of really annoying, to be honest. But it is what it is. So I would then say, well, there's a, a free one again, and I could turn. I don't want to break this one. So instead of just turning, instead of just turning this top free one across to there, which would break these two, what I'll do is rotate 180 to put this on the same line, and I'm just going to turn one onto the other. So I'll turn one to there and then flip this whole big edge. And this is sort of why I say, when you have all the outer edges in position, you can grip everything really easily. There's no issues of things doing that. That's the problem that I have at the moment. Okay, I flipped that. I'll now turn that back and what that's got for us is one there and one there. Okay, fine. We've got a whole bunch of other pieces now that I guess this is good practice to redo these. What would I do here? I would, okay, these two, I'm going to flip this big edge because it's going to put them down here and then I'll have one there and one there. So there's one, there's one, ignore that piece. I'm going to use that to push it out and then flip the edge. Uh, which one did I turn, top or bottom? I think bottom, can't remember. Let's have a look. Must have been bottom because I've got that one is now good. That one's okay. It's got there, that one there. This one is now in this position. So what I can do is again get this from the wing position to the outer edge position by turning one of them across and flipping the edge. So I've just had to add five minutes onto this solve because of that. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it is pretty normal. For this puzzle because of the uh, sort of the way the catching and things like that okay one is done two is done three is done i've just got to take care now of the last two where are they there's one of them and there's the other now again i've got to work out a way to get this across to the empty slot so first thing i'll flip it so it comes over to that side. Okay, now it's over here. Now, I'd like to get it to this position. So first thing, I'm going to have to move it across to there. This is not going to be too bad because it's going to go across to there and then flip up to here and then I'll be able to flip it back. Which 
one did I turn bottom layer? Here we go. So that's now there. I can just flip the whole big edge to put it back to that one. All right, and now we have the two there that are in the position that I want them, corresponding positions. So the one that's close to the other one, push that across and then flip the big edge. Oh my goodness, come on. I don't want to let go of this because I'm going to go around three and I think I then had to do that but again I've lost the train of thought that I had and I really don't know if that was it or not let's see what that's done okay that did actually work I must have managed to remember what I was doing because that's where you want the last two pieces in the wing position, which can then easily be moved across to here. And turn back. Ooh. All eight of these pieces are now in the middle layer, and in fact, every outer edge is exactly where I want it. So, yep, that's pretty normal for a solve like this. And as I say, when you can grip the outer edges when you're turning stuff, it makes it far easier to keep things when you want. When you can't grip them, that's where the trouble comes. And you, you've seen exactly what happens there. Sometimes you kind of lose your train of thought. I repeat, please don't let this put you off the rest of the series because the rest of the series really is nothing like this one in turning. All right, well, that has completed the outer edges and I've gone through all the techniques you will need to get those outer edges there. The next thing that we're going to do is to place the inner edges next to the outer edges. So this is a fairly straightforward phase. It just takes a while. So I'm definitely not going to do the whole lot, but I'll show you exactly what to do. And we use the center to do that. So all I'm doing is looking for two inner edge pieces that belong together. Let's find one that's really simple to see initially. So I'm only looking in the center positions, by the way. So there's an inner edge that's in that. I don't care. I just want to look in the center positions. And I'm looking for a tall and a small. Okay. You see here that there's a blue piece, which is a shorter piece or a small piece. There's also a blue here, which is a tall. Now, if I brought them together, they create a complete inner edge pair. That's what I want to do. And remember that I can happily move these anywhere I want. And that's why there was absolutely no point trying to pair these outer edges because I need to move them around now. Now, once I've made a pair, what I generally do to get a rhythm is always do this in the same direction. So I always have it pointing upwards to the right and I want to find an outer edge of the same color because I want to place that into there and I'll turn that down so that is the position. This is on the top. This is down here in the front right position. Now, and all that we're going to do is turn this outer edge into here, just that bottom slice like so. Bring down, well, it's supposed to be easy. I'm not exactly sure what's catching there. That's turning now. Let's try that again. Yay! Bring that down and that has correctly attached. Now, a couple of really important things. The first thing is that you notice there that I've brought down the slices and the outer layer because it's the simplest way to do it. If I turn this back, oh, my outer edges are out. That is definitely no good. So what I need to do is when I bring down the slice, I must turn back the outer layer so that when I put it into position, all the structure is still there. You can see that that has perfectly positioned where it needs to be. So if it is raised 
and pointing towards the outer edge, it will go exactly where you want it to go. Now with the next one, I'll talk about the other thing that is important to keep in mind. So let's have a look how we might make, uh, see if I can make a white pair here, if there's enough white pieces. There is, so I noticed that this white tool, if I rotate that around like so, I can then move that white small up into position. So once I've got that there, I'll try and get a white edge from somewhere and place it here. And it's going to be, because it's on the bottom layer, it's on the lower layer of the two slices, I'm looking for a white piece on the lower layer. I'm just going to move that one out of the way to not confuse things. So that is the white piece I'm looking for. Now, away I go again. However, what happens is when I turn this in, I've also turned something in on the back. You can see this has gone into here as well. So let's just contemplate what's going on. I turn that bottom layer. The part that's turning in is this red outer edge here and those pieces there. So if that was already made, I would not want to do that because it would break what I've done. So I just, once I've got this set up, I just flick it over and check. Yep, that's fine. And I'm ready to go. So turn that across to meet it. Turn it down. Put the outer edge or the outer layer back and return. As I said at the start, simple turns, nothing really to think about too much. Now there are a couple of situations that I will take you through closer to the end. So I'm going to go off camera and do most of the rest of these and come back in. But I will go through what happens if you can't find a match, what happens in other situations. So let me just do one more for now, just to make sure that everything's clear. There's an orange pair that's already made. So that's pointing here. It's in the upper layer and you can see there's an orange piece there. So I would turn that down. I would just quickly go check the upper layer and it's clear. In other words, it's not done. And so I'm good to go. You can see things wanting to go a bit skew if there. Now, of course, you can do this. You can have it pointing to the left, whatever you want. I just tend to do it from the same direction all the time. All right. So as I said, I'll continue working through them. There's a lot to do and I'll cut back in soon. Well, one thing that can happen is you can have a bunch of pieces in the center and not a single one of them will match up. And so you can see I've got a, a heap of tall pieces. So I'm just going to look for the smalls. I've got a yellow small here, which is on the upper left. So I need a yellow tall to be on the upper right pointing to it. Well, that's not going to work. That one's not going to work. Now that might. Yes, that will work. But let's pretend that that one doesn't. That's actually the only one I've seen on here that works. I've got nothing that I can do. Well, what I need then is to bring some more pieces out of the inner edge position. So, for example, let's say that I was trying to be a little bit judicious about this and say, well, here's a couple of pieces that I wouldn't mind bringing out. So I'm going to say that I'm, pretend that I'm placing these ones and I'll just check the corresponding position on the back and that is filled. So again, what do you do if that's filled? Well, you just sort of turn something else into its place. You can do that from there, from there, whatever. So I've got that one okay. So this stuff's also going to come out. Now, what, what is going to happen is that whatever is in this upper layer here on the upper slice is going to go into here. So this is a red lower coming out. I probably don't want a red, a red tall going in. So let's see if I can firstly, ideally, I would prefer to just have centers there. And so what I may do is just rotate that face so that now... Those two centers will go into there, which is fine because I want the inner edges to come out. At the back here, I've got to, I've just got to get that something back to the upper, which will be that one there. Now on the back also, I'm going to have things that I don't really want to go in, but I'll ignore them for now because I'm just demonstrating that I'm going to put these centers in here and I want to pull these two lower pieces out. So now that I've got that, I just proceed as normal. You can see the yellow and green centers go into there. 
and that should give me some more options of things. Let's go and find if we can. Looks like that little red lower and straight away I'm able to match up. And normally what happens is you might get stuck and you'll then match one up and then it'll just keep going from there. So we'll see if that's the case. We've got the double reds there on the lower. So I'll turn that to the lower. Check the lower, there's something there. So I just want to do that sort of thing to put a spare slot at the bottom. Okay, that's done. What else is now available? If anything, there's a small orange there. Do I have a large orange? No, so I ignore that. There's a small yellow. Now that may be the small yellow that I saw before. And that is in the upper position. So I can turn that around, match it with that. That's now on the upper line. So there's a yellow on the upper. I'll turn that face to meet it. That's fine. And what I'm really interested in seeing here is if I can continue matching stuff. I've got an orange there. Yes, I can, because that orange will turn around. This tall orange will rotate to that position, and then they'll come together. So I'll continue and cut back in soon. All right, well, this is as good as any place to cut back in because it's getting close to the end of this section. But we've encountered a little bit of a problem here and I've got two reds set up and I've got the position to fill them down there. So what I'm trying to find is another empty slot that can be placed on the lower layer down the back here. And when I look around, that's empty, it's on the upper layer. That's also going to be on the upper layer if I flip it. What else do I have? This one here? Well that's definitely going to be on the upper layer because I can just see that if I turn it like that. Is there anything else? There's literally nothing else that I can use. And so now this is the situation where I've got to pretend that I'm down to the last one of these. And this happens all the time. You've only got one to do and you've only got one slot. And so you ignore all this other stuff because it's on the other line, if you like. So how do we deal with this? Well, what we want to do is first of all, this is red, this is red. I need to get a completed red piece in the lower portion on the back face here. So I just have to find any red piece like that one. That will do. Turn that up and just check what we've got. So that's ready to go in here. And that is a reduced, fully reduced red piece there. So we set things up like that so the same color is there. Now, we simply move this piece off to the side, just using a slice turn. Just turn it off to the side like that, nothing else. And now, carry out what we were gonna do. So, we're gonna move that into there, turn this down, and return it. Now, let's put this red piece that we turned with the slice turn back into position, you'll notice suddenly that there is another red piece that's been created and there's an empty red slot. So we now have two red pieces and two slots exactly where we want them. So what I'll do first is just turn that one around to the back. So this is set up. I now need to get my red piece into that correct position and just as this one points towards this when it comes down, the other one needs to point towards this when it comes up. And so it's going to come up when I turn this down, this one comes up to here and it's pointing towards the correct one. So once you've got that into position, carry out the exact same normal routine. We'll put that there. You can see that is attached and the one at the back has also attached undo the turn and we've taken care of that. So that's at least completed that section. Now I need to now look at the other ones because there's still some to do. So I would continue looking for anything to pair. So I've got a couple of oranges here. Now I'm guaranteed to find 
the slots that I need. There's one. Now I need to place an empty slot on the back and it's going to be on the upper. So if I turn that around, there's one. Okay, good. I can do this as normal. Now it's going to be getting tricky because there's going to be a few pieces that are... Well, what have we got to do? We've got this one here, which is sort of a yellow and an orange together, which is not reduced. The rest of that looks okay. That side looks okay. And we've got this empty slot. And we've got one yellow piece here. So this is very, very strange. So let's first of all say, how do we deal with one yellow piece, which is a small, and one orange, which is a tall? Well, I need to do the thing that I did a little bit earlier and get the other appropriate piece out of there. So if I turn that orange across, that's actually a center because when it's in the center position, it's flat. So that's not the one I'm overly interested in. The one that I would be interested in is this orange piece here because you can see that that is a small inner edge. It happens to be in the correct position and it's even in the correct outer edge. It's just I've got to get this out in order to match it with that orange. So in other words, I want to take these two pieces out and I want to replace them with some center bits. So there's some center bits. And on the back, what do I have? Well, ideally, this is in the upper layer. So ideally, I want to put this other piece that's spare at the moment there. Now, you remember from the previous thing that I did that the other center parts come from here. So this won't be affected. So I've got things set up now so I can pull out this orange piece. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I'm now able to, and again, I'm guaranteed that this has to work, I'm now able to match those two orange pieces. Let's go ahead and see if we can get them filled. So that's on the upper layer. Put that one down the bottom, and I'm just looking for the other slot, which I'm pretty sure is going to have to go into the correct position. Now, at this point, we have the luxury, I think, of being able to potentially place both of these at once. And if you can do that, that's great. You don't need to leave it till the last one. So let me see if I can firstly put these together. The question is, can I get these things onto the correct face? So First of all, I'm going to turn that way around to there. Get the orange back. So this orange is ready for there. Now, I need that yellow and I need the other yellow pointing towards it. So everything is now set up. This will be the last one that I'll need to do. The orange has gone in. The yellow has gone in. And all of those inner edges have been reduced. Well, the next stage of the solve is to do the wings, is to place the wings on the inner edges. And this is the part where it's got the only really recognized algorithm. As I said at the start, it's a pretty simple one. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm looking for any raised wing that is in this lower left position. And that's a blue one. And so I'd like to place that into a blue Base. So I'm just going to turn that base around so that it's next to it. So the piece movement that I'm looking at here is this one will go over to here. This one will go to the back position that rolls into the here. So if I sort of roll that from the back, there's a white raised piece. That's where it's come from. So if you consider that, it's actually on the top layer on the back. Now, the thing about the movement and the orientation of these pieces is that the one or the two pieces on the front here will change their orientation. The piece on the back will not. So this blue is currently raised. It is going to flatten, which is exactly what I want. This white is currently raised. It is going to flatten and go into that white base there. Now, this white piece happens to be raised and it will not change its orientation. So it'll come to the orange and it will stay raised. So I've got the pieces set up. I'll get the blue done. I'll get the white done. The algorithm is the corner piece series for cuboids, 
but it's done with this upper turn instead of an upper face. So with a cuboid algorithm, you can't turn 90 degrees. So if you think about a three by three by four, for example, I can't do a normal corner piece series because I can't do 90 degree turns. I need to do 180 degree turns. So that's the sort of thing I'm looking at here. So I want to do an up plus, so a 30 degree upper clockwise slice, then right two, then an up minus, and then left two. And then an up plus, and this just gets repeated because of what I'm doing now is returning the right. But because I did a right two, the returning of the right is also a right two. Up minus and return the left. Now you'll see that blue rays that was there has gone here. The white rays has gone here and I have my white piece from the back, which has not changed its orientation and landed where I want it. Well, not where I want it, but it's where I'm going to start with it again. So all I'm doing here is saying, oh, okay, I've got another white raised. I'm going to find a white base that goes into that position that needs to have that filled. Okay, there's one. So there's a white base there. And of course, I can move all this stuff around as I wish. There's no problem with that. This is a blue raised piece. So ideally, what I'm looking for is a blue base on the back which contains an orange flat piece. I would search for that. Stranger things have happened. There's a blue base with an orange raised piece, which is close, but no cigar. However, I will use that because that at least allows me to get this blue piece placed as well. And if that orange piece was flat, that would come up here and we would get three done. So I'm almost always getting two done at a time, at minimum. And once the pieces are ready, it's really quick and simple. And that's done. I often don't do the last turn because it's just a face turn. But in this case, I will just because I want to put that orange raised bit back. Now, a couple of things that we can look at. What happens if you have an orange raised? And I've got another orange raised here. Well, let's put this one over to there. First of all, I can turn that around to the back and bring it down. I've got two raised bits of the same color. What I need to make this work is an orange reduced bit on the back. Now, I probably don't have a completely reduced bit, which is orange yet, because we've only just started. I don't, but I'll do it with I'll do it with this orange piece here. So I'll just put that into position. And what I've got is an orange raised going to this base. It'll flatten. This orange raised will go to that base and it'll flatten. And then I'll have this yellow piece which will come up to here. So essentially, if you have two raised pieces of the same color, you just need the third same color at the back. That's done. Again, I could do that final turn to do that. That's flat, so I'm generally going to just go look somewhere else for a raised bit. So I'll do one more of these and then cut through to closer to the end. Suppose here's another example where I've got a yellow in a green and a yellow in a green. I've got this green yellow here as well. So what I'd probably try And that's actually in the wrong line, which is a little bit of a pain. So I'll just yellow into a green, yellow into a green. It's not going to work because I want that yellow to go to a yellow. I do have a yellow sitting here, though. Now that can go there. So you can't always get exactly what you want. That yellow will place. That green is going to raise, so I'm really not looking to place the green. What I would like is to get a green flat piece to go in here, sitting on the back. And I don't care what base it's in, as long as it's flat. So this one looks like a pretty good candidate. So perhaps I shall do 
that. Now, what strange thing did I just do? I think that's better. Yeah. So I'll place the yellow and this green flat will roll up and place that one. So I'm still getting two done. And I've got a green raised to keep going. I'll continue and cut back in a bit later. Well, there's a pretty good place to cut back in. I've got a couple of issues here. I've got no raised bits anywhere. I've got around about six of these things to place, but nothing's raised. So first thing is, what do you do then? Well, you think about a piece like this. That's a white base. So I would be first looking for a white flat piece to go on the back somewhere. So there's a white flat piece that may be on the that is on the back that's exactly where it needs to be so that is good that's at least going to come and place here now this orange piece is going to go to something here so what i then want is to find anything that will go into that position and the problem that i've got is i don't think there is anything of all the pieces that i've got are all sort of on the upper that would turn around and come down to the upper as well so with that, the only other options, there's none there. This one here would turn across to there as well. So I've got nothing that I can use there. So all I can really do is sacrifice a piece and it doesn't really matter what I do. However, I notice that there's quite a few yellow and whites floating around. So I'd be happy to sacrifice a white piece here. So remember at the moment, I'm just trying to get this white flat piece into there and then we'll go from there okay that's done and oh there we go there's a lock up by the way and you can just see that's happened so i would grab that and just twist it around and it's fixed so no great harm done that was the piece that I've just dealt with. So what that then does is create some raised bits, which is good. So I've got this white piece now, which I can then go and put back into there. That's an orange piece. So let's see if I can find an orange base of some kind. If not, I will find any of the other pieces that I have. I don't think that I've got any other orange bases that need to be dealt with. So I would then say, okay, let's just put something at the back that one is not done so that'll do just fine okay now we're probably back to the same sort of situation i've got orange in white yellow in orange nothing there yellow in green green in yellow yeah, okay, so you can see what's happening. So I would then go, let's try and get the green and yellow and the yellow and green sorted out first. Uh, first thing I would do would see, yep, I'm going to move that yellow to the back. So that yellow flat is going to come to here and I just want another green or yellow piece and I'm not really fussed, I don't think... I think I've got a spare one floating around. I'm just going to have to use that one. Although that, no, that's a center. So that's fine. I'll use a piece of the same color. I'm just going to get this yellow done first of all. Okay. Now that's created the yellow raised going to here. The green raised needs to go to a green flat and I need a green flat. Well, for example, that piece there can turn and be the one if I don't have any others. So I think I will use that. That's on the back. I've just got to... Okay. Yep, so that's green is now there. That's going to take care of the yellow and greens. Now, that being done, I should just be left with 
maybe two or three more. I've got a white and a yellow, an orange and a white, and a yellow and an orange. Okay, so once again, let's just firstly put that white flat piece at the back to go here. And let's see whether the yellow in the orange will go to here. It won't. So I've kind of got to, unless there's another one for here somewhere. I don't think I saw one. That's the one I'm using. So I ignore this piece for now. And I just, I've got the white, the orange, the white, and the yellow. I will just, let's have a think. I really don't think it matters what color as long as it's something that's sharing. So this white will do fine. Okay, that's taken care of. I've now got the white raised to go here. The orange raised needs to go to an orange flat. So I'm looking, or sorry, an orange base. I'm looking for an orange base with a yellow flat. Well, would you look at that? That's exactly the piece I want and it's in the correct position. So I'll just turn it round to the back and place it in that position. And I reckon this is the last one. I can't see any others that need to be dealt with. And so the point of doing all that is to say, if you do get stuck, you just do one at a time and eventually they will all be set up for how you want them. And we are done. Just looking around to triple check. They all look good. They look good. So that is the wings taken care of. And where we are now is we have what is essentially a 4x4 cube. We've reduced this puzzle to a 4x4 cube. Now, even though I'm pretty sure that most people watching this would know how to solve a 4x4, I'm still going to go through the 4x4 solve for this one just for completeness. So I would initially go, let's make some centers. I'd start with the whites for no other reason than I start with the whites. And there's the white center. I'll go and put some yellow centers over here. And if you're not familiar with the 4x4, then please check out the video that I have on it. You can see generally the puzzle's turning better, but it's still not fantastic. So let's make the reds or the blues next. Perhaps it doesn't really matter, does it? I'm... Yeah, let's turn this around. Okay, that's my red face. So in terms of the colors and the centers, I'm noting that if I hold this corner here, white's on the top, red's on the left, blue's on the right. So I look at the centers, white's on the top, red's on the left, this has got to be blue. So I'll again bring blue in there, push it out and return it. Red, blue, next one should be orange. So I now need to make that last orange pair and the centers are done. The next part of a 4x4 is pairing these edges. So we've got heaps of freedom here. We can do it however we want. I generally like to sort of get all the whites done first, just so it removes one color from the mix. And so, of course, with pairing edges, I should just go through that a little bit more. Got a white, green, white, orange. There's another white, green. So I don't have to do the whites, of course, but I'm just going to pretend I do. Got a green white and a green white. What I'm doing is bringing them together and of course disrupting centers. I'm then turning them to an adjacent face and replacing with another piece. In this case, I'd like to bring a white down and then I return centers. There's a white blue I can sort of, I don't have to stick to that face by the way, I can just Change it to this one or this axis. I'll bring my white blues together. Is there another white piece? There is. So I'll replace it with this one. 
and then return centers. And the white oranges are the last ones. And perhaps I can start on the yellows. Okay, so all the whites are done. I've got a yellow orange done. Now here's another technique, yellow, green, yellow, green. Sometimes you get to this at the end and you've only got two to go. What you can do is push one of them out with the other and then flip the big edge. And then when you return, the centers come back and those two are paired together. Yellow, red, and bring them to the same line. Got a couple of yellow blues up here, so centers are back. There's a yellow blue, and there's the other one. Now, of course, I'm just replacing with whatever I can find. And there will be at least eight done. And I've just got these ones in this middle layer now. So, for example, I would... Just trying to find two that are really nicely obvious, which, of course, they're not. I'm going to put that one up there. Bring this down. So... I've got the blue orange here and a blue orange over here. So again, I'll bring them across and just replace these with this one. And then return centers. That's done that. I've got now got blue, red, orange, green and green, red. So this is a fairly simple last little case where I can use this last one to finish off. So with the last ones, I'm bringing the red green across to here and I'm noting that it's sitting on top of a green orange. So I wanna use this piece to put a green orange on the upper layer when I bring this down. So if I bring it down now, the orange green's on the lower layer. So I wanna bring it down by turning its position up and putting it on. And now the green orange is on the upper layer when I turn the centers back, it makes that last piece. So these are now all paired. The next step is to solve some edges, put them in place. And as per usual, I'd start with this white cross. That's done. I'll do some middle layer edges. Three of them to be precise. And then use this fourth one to get initially the back two done. So I'm looking for yellow, red, and yellow blue. Well, let's put the yellow blue on there and this yellow red. Oops, I better put this one back. The yellow red can then flip over to its position. Now that's in, that's in. And the last three will be some kind of either a three cycle or a swap. So this one's in position. This is in position and this is in position, but these two are flipped. So I happen to have a three cycle and I've got two flipped edges. So this is nice and standard. And I would then flip both of these in the sort of normal manner that I would do. Down, down, up, up. And then across, move it up, undo, undo. And for now that places them. Of course, you could get a flipped single edge, a single flipped edge for one of them. And there's a fairly standard fix for that. You can see the four by four video if you wish. And the last thing here that I want to do is place corners. And I suppose for this particular solve, I'm hoping that I don't get a swap of corners, but probably because I'm hoping that, well, I will. 
I'm just using the corner piece series here, which is the same. It's the ordinary thing from which all the other corner piece series are generated. And I'm just looking to roll a corner down an edge or move one across a diagonal. So this white, orange, green could move across to there. And the piece movement will go like that. That one is in that creates this white one. There's nothing here, so I'll put a third one up there. And initially, I'm just trying to get any five corners done. Here's another one that can be done. This one across to here. Now that's in position, that's in position, oh, wouldn't you know it, yellow, green, orange, swapping with white, green. I knew that if I didn't want it, it had happened. So I'm not going to bother with them because I've now got a swap of two corners. And so my fix for that is I need to create a swap of two edges. And to do that, I'm going to turn half of the cube like that. I'm going to flip this big edge and I'm going to flip the one on the other side. Flip that first one, come around to the other side, flip the corresponding one there. And then return centers. And what we'll see is in the middle layer, I now have a swap of the red, blue, and the orange, green edge. So I can now go ahead and re-solve my edges and corners as I was and we get to the last one undo setups and we have a completely solved master mix up version one so I hope that made sense and apart from the catching and the, the annoyances with turning of the cube I hope it was relatively enjoyable as I said I'm doing the entire series so hope you look forward to them and as always thanks for watching